The world of monster trucks is already an incredible sight to behold. The enormity of these trucks can get a little lost in translation though when you just see them in a photo. But to be in the stadium and hear the roar of the engines filling the air is quite another experience altogether. And some of those car crushing trucks are pretty cool. But some of the others, well, let's just say they could also crush other trucks as well. From the original monster truck Bigfoot to the fan favorite El Toro Loco, here are the 15 most incredible monster trucks in the world. Number 15. Bigfoot. Now for our first entry on this list, we're going to take it way back in the annals of monster truckism and celebrate the godfather of the big old monster truck, Bigfoot. The owner of Bigfoot, Bob Chandler, was getting a little bit tired of his old 4x4 always breaking down. Now granted, he drove that truck pretty hard, so wear and tear is going to be natural. In order to remedy this, he began putting together a bigger and more robust truck. And by 1979, his truck was so big that he was actually being paid to parade it around at the Denver Car Show. A couple years later, and Bob was curious as to whether or not he would be able to crush some scrap cars beneath his newly built behemoth. And the rest, ladies and gentlemen, and all you other people, is history. As Ton and his popularity grew, so did the already enormous size of his truck. The second iteration of the Bigfoot truck had 66 inch tall and 34 inch wide tires. And ever since those days, a whopping 21 different Bigfoot trucks have been constructed, with the newest iteration being the biggest monster truck of all time. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Avenger. No, everyone, it's not like Marvel's The Avengers. I know I was a little bit disappointed as well, but this monster truck still kicks some serious butt. Piloted and built by Jim Kohler in Columbus, Michigan, this forest green monster truck uses the Chevrolet S10 body style and sports a teal chassis and rims. Though as time would go on, the S10 body would be replaced by a 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air. The truck made its debut in 1997 and has been a fan favorite ever since, winning the first world championship title for the truck in 2003 using the original forest green body. Though the following year he had broken his truck and was unable to compete, he may have been frustrated in the moment and very quickly made a comeback on the circuits. Since the creation in 1999, the Avenger truck has partaken in every single Monster Jam World Finals competition, and although he doesn't always place very well, there's no doubt that you're still going to get a spectacular show from Mr. Kohler and his hugely impressive truck. He's consistently voted the fan favorite and has thanked his fans profusely for helping him enter into the championships. Number 13. El Toro Loco now, for all of you non-Spanish speakers out there, El Toro Loco is Spanish for the crazy bull, and crazy it is indeed. The truck would be created in 2001 and has a pretty large number of different drivers over the years. That's because the truck was created by the Monster Jam company itself as a sort of offshoot of the truck known as Bulldozer. Using the Bulldozer design, Monster Jam created a 3D mold of the truck, but then added one really super cool effect. The truck, well, it's painted like a bull, and it has two exhaust vents on top of the hood. The best part? Smoke gets blown out of those 
those exhaust vents, making it look like the truck is breathing out smoke through its nostrils. This is turned on and off by a button that's inside. In the year 2003, the truck made its first appearance in the Monster Jam World Finals, and its first racing results were actually kind of disappointing. But the driver at the time really excelled in the freestyle section of the competition. This would lead many fans to fall in love with the truck, which has increased its popularity a whole lot over the years. Number 12. The Gas Monkey Garage Finally, something based off of a proper pop culture reference. Well, kind of. The Gas Monkey Garage is actually just based off of the Discovery Channel television show called Fast and Loud. The glowing green truck was designed in tandem with the Gas Monkey Garage and made its Monster Jam debut in 2016. The truck's body would be designed by the Gas Monkey Garage owner Richard Rawlings himself, though he isn't the one behind the wheel at the end of it all. The television series is based in Dallas, Texas, showing Richard Rawlings running around buying and fixing and restoring classic cars and hot rods. The series really is a one-of-a-kind show. It's made all the better by Rawlings' charismatic presence, so it would make perfect sense in the end to make a monster truck based off of the program. A team of Monster Jam engineers and technicians designed and built the chassis, while driving veteran BJ Johnson would be selected to drive the Gas Monkey Garage in the Monster Jam competition. This result is truly a one-of-a-kind experience in the world of Monster Jam and in monster trucks in general. Number 11. Grave Digger now back when I was just a wee little boy in the late 90s and early 2000s, there was always one monster truck that was on every single one of those Monster Jam commercials. And that truck was Gravedigger. And for good reason as well. This is one of the most decorated trucks in the history of the monster truck sport. And this is saying a lot because Gravedigger is also one of the original monster trucks. The concept for Gravedigger first came up all the way back in 1981 and would be finished in 1982 by Dennis Anderson. Dennis needed to build what was called a mud bogger, which is a truck that can quickly get through more muddy terrains. Using salvaged parts, his friends joked that the truck first threw so much mud that you could dig a grave with it. And thus, the name Gravedigger was born. In 1986, Gravedigger was painted with its now infamous graveyard paint job, and from there, it would get much more famous as time went on. As monster truck rallies got more and more popular, not only in stadiums but also on television, Gravedigger, along with Dennis, would be launched into superstardom and became the face of the Monster Jam tournament. Number 10. Lucas Oil Crusader now, like many of the newer trucks that were added to the Monster Jam series, the Lucas Oil Crusader was a truck sponsored by a company that also sponsors Monster Jam in general. In the case of this Crusader, it was developed and sponsored by Lucas Oil, which is a Houston, Texas oil company. The truck made its Monster Jam debut in 2011. The truck had a relatively short run as well, being retired on July 28th of 2019, but have no fear, because one year later the truck would be brought back so it could compete in the Red Stadium Championship Series. But it only made its comeback for that one last competition. In December of that year, it was yet again announced that the truck would be retired permanently this time. The truck's driver was Lindsey Wink, who consequently was the driver for the entirety of its Monster Jam run. The truck, throughout its lifetime, didn't exactly perform very well, although Lindsey was a veteran driver of the truck so it's hard to say at this point what exactly the problem actually was. Sometimes, you know, things just don't click the way you want them to, and for the Lucas Oil Crusader, it just wasn't in the stars. Number 9. Max D now, despite its rather suggestive nickname, Max D actually stands for Maximum Destruction. 
Apart from sporting a really super awesome and badass paint and body job, Max D would rise to fame beginning in the year 2000, and not only for its distinctively cool look, but the truck is also famous for being able to do backflips during the freestyle portions of Monster Jam. That's right, this truck, it can actually do a full-on backflip. Tom Meentz, the driver of this mean machine, accidentally hit a step up during a show in Sweden and that caused his truck to flip onto the roof of the cab. But this simple accident would inspire other drivers to attempt to do a full backflip with their trucks. Many would attempt this feat, and none succeeded, including Meentz, who got very close though in 2009. The truck, apart from the backflips, is known for having a very wild and bouncy driving style. It can actually take several hits during the freestyle portion of the Monster Jam and still just keep chugging along. It's also known for causing many crashes, though this is simply a result of Mint's wild driving. Cause you know, Rubbin's racing, right? Number 8. Monster Energy now I want you all to close your eyes and take a wild guess who could possibly be one of the biggest supporters of the Monster Jam Company in competition. And if you guessed Monster Energy Drink, well, you'd be totally correct. Of course, the two biggest monster names in the world would team up, because if they didn't, we'd all lose faith in humanity. Monster Energy entered into the Monster Jam world in 2012 as a major team sponsor when Monster Energy debuted in Birmingham, Alabama. During its debut year, it ended up coming in first place at that year's freestyle competition in San Antonio, Texas. Then later on, during the same competition, it was qualified for the racing portion. Talk about making a big splash. However, in that race, it was going up against the previous entry, Maximum Destruction. And boy, was that an amazingly close race. The Monster Energy truck ended up losing to Max D uh, by only two seconds, and it makes it the closest victory in the history of Monster Trucks. And that, well, it's just way too bad for Monster Energy. What an amazing first year it was for them anyway. Number 7. Overkill Evolution it's kind of a lame name, but the two dudes behind Overkill Evolution, Marty Garza and Mike Vaders, began their decades-long friendship in 1988, and over the course of the next 25 years, both would grow together as people and as passionate monster truck owners. Finally, in 2013, the two decided to join forces and gifted the Overkill Evolution truck to the world of Monster Jam. The dynamic duo then decided to partner with Dave Hoppert from One up off-road, and altogether, they painstakingly engineered the chassis using 3D printing and geometry in order to help them to make their dream into a reality. The creators of Overkill Evolution have gone on record as saying their new machine represents the natural progression of Monster Jam truck technology. Who better to drive this one than the son of one of the trucks, a young blood named Mike Vaders II. Mike Jr. would be born in 1988 and was in fact born three weeks after the duo met. Mike Jr. then went on to win the Freestyle Championship in 2015, which I'm sure brought a tear to the joy of his proud old man. Number 6. The Raminator now, while Overkill Evolution was made by two best friends, the Raminator can do one better. It was made by two brothers who were best friends. The Raminator quickly made a name for itself, garnering multiple wins in multiple competitions thanks to the brotherly engineering and driving of duo Mark and Tim Hall. They sure did climb their way to the top really fast as well. Not only was the driving at the core of their success, but the truck had an unmatchable power under its hood. The Raminator boasts a 565 CL supercharged Hemi engine and over 2,000 horsepower. In 2001, Mark's outstanding racing skills with the Raminator caught the eye of their now official sponsor, Dodge Trucks. So, if we can take away anything from the most successful people in Monster Jam, it's this. 
keep it all in the family. Or at the very least, have a good, hardworking, and supportive team to back up your monster truck. This is perhaps true for most things in life. Keep good and motivated people around you, and you can never go wrong. Number 5. Son, Uva Digger Speaking of keeping it in the family, this next truck is actually an offshoot or the son of one of the other famous trucks on our list, the Grave Digger. This one is Sun Uva Digger. It was unveiled to much fanfare at the 2011 Monster Jam World Finals, helping to continue the legacy of one of the most important monster trucks in history. Ryan Anderson, who was the driver of Monster Mutt at the time, came roaring into Monster Jam and won Rookie of the Year honors. He then took up the mantle of Uva Digger, and within a few short years, would be poised to carry on the legacy of the Grave Digger by becoming next in line to become its driver. Since its debut in 2011, the Sun Uva Digger has made waves throughout the world of Monster Jam. and is now a sort of stepping stone for all other drivers who wish to push their skills to the limit, and possibly step into the line of becoming the driver of the legendary Gravedigger itself. But don't fight over it all, you guys. If you work hard, you'll probably get there someday. Number 4. Zombie now, out of all the sports in the world, I'd have to say that Monster Truck takes the cake when it comes to listening to what their fans want. And when Monster Jam put their ear to the ground in 2013, they heard people crying out for a truck like Zombie. So then, Zombie made its debut in 2013 to a roaring crowd who was highly anticipating what they had asked for. After going through many different designs and names for a potential new monster truck, the heads at Monster Jam decided to let the public have a go at it. So they made a poll online showing all of the top designs they had so far and let their public choose. And the public? Well, they chose the truck that came back from the dead. Zombie made its debut in 2013 with the experienced driver Sean Duhon behind the wheel, who had previously found a lot of success driving other Monster Jam trucks, which include the ever-popular Superman. Barry Musawer, Joe Yuri, Paul Strong, and Macy Nichter make up the Team Zombie in United States competition in 2019, along with international partner Alex Danielson. Number 3. Tropical Thunder this truck sounds a little bit more sexy than the other ones. This sexy truck would be introduced into the monster truck circuit in 2007 and has been slowly but surely gaining popularity. Draped in an eye-catching orange and yellow paint job, the truck is easily recognizable on the track as it crunches and rolls its way through the monster truck circuit. Even people who are unfamiliar with monster truck culture will have their attention pulled its way. The Tropical Thunder gets its rumble from a 540CL dart motor engine with a 1500 horsepower behind it, and it handles like a dream. Given its Cohen two-speed power glide transmission, the truck also makes full use of its bulldozer chassis, making it capable of driving over almost anything. If only monster trucks were street legal. The truck first got its start in the 1990s, but was discontinued in 1998, until one of the partners of Monster Jam would swoop in and buy the rights to the name, and that's when they introduced it in 2007 to little fanfare. But everyone should just give it time, because this one's a grower and not a shower. Number 2. Blue Thunder Blue Thunder that's for the monster truck fans who totally know that reference. Anyway, Blue Thunder is without a doubt another one of the coolest looking trucks out on the dirt. It sports an electric dark blue paint job with solid chrome suspension. Blue Thunder debuted on January 6, 2001 at the Houston Astrodome in Houston, Texas, and this Monster Jam truck has quickly become a fan favorite at Monster Jam events around the world.
While Blue Thunder hasn't really won anything of note, the truck has still made many appearances at different competitions around the globe, including being in the finals of the 2016 Young Gun Shootout and during the Monster Jam World Finals. The truck is currently being driven by Matt Cody and is sponsored by Ford, though in 2011, Ford had dropped their sponsorship. Things look grim for Blue Thunder after that. That was until Monster Jam brought the truck back two years later. To this day, Blue Thunder's still going strong, though it still has yet to actually win a championship. So hey everyone, let's all root for the underdog. Number 1. Sudden Impact now first, I'd like to say that Sudden Impact is an awesome Dirty Harry movie. Second of all, this is the coolest name for a monster truck hands down. Apart from the name, what else is cool about it though? Well how about the fact that it's the first monster truck to implement a driveline blanket made of Kevlar? This blanket goes around the outside of the drive shaft loop in order to make sure that if the drive shaft breaks, the parts are not going to fly off the truck and possibly seriously injure anyone. The truck would originally be driven by John on Seasock and has been to four world finals under his command, though since then it's seen many other drivers. You could say the truck really knows how to get around. All nasty jokes aside, the truck has been around since the 90s and is still going fairly strong. It uses the body of a 2004 Ford Ranger and is draped in stars and orange and red and is very festive looking. The engine is a roaring 572 CL big block Ford and is one of the more powerful trucks in the current circuit, though it's still not at the tippy top. Now if only these bad boys were street legal, I swear getting to work at home would be totally awesome. Alas, we still get to see them crush and destroy cars and buses and things out on the track, so thank goodness for that at least. Which one of these bad boys would you like to get behind the wheel of and go for a joy ride in? Let me know in the comments below, also check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.